Our scripture reading today is one which I'm sure most of us are quite familiar with. We turn to the book of Ecclesiastes, starting at verse 1. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good work while they live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him. Whatever is has already been, and what will be has been before, and God will call the past to account. It was in 1965 that the birds recorded their hit record, Turn, Turn, Turn. But I wonder how many people knew that the lyrics quoted the words of King Solomon in Ecclesiastes 3. This well-known passage of scripture does one of two things for us. It either reminds us of the hope that we have in God, or it can leave us feeling rather depressed and without hope. The key to whichever side you're on, of course, is Jesus Christ. Life in this world is a strange mixture of joy and sorrow, of harmony and conflict, of life and death. And despite our desire to be in control, more often than not, we find ourselves just being swept along and we so easily become overwhelmed by our circumstances. Which is why it is good for us to be reminded that there is something which lies beyond this life and there is a purpose for our existence. For many Christians, we become frustrated because this longing for, for eternity, which Solomon wrote about in verse 11, is something that God has put within us and we, we do know that but we still feel kind of trapped at times. Now, of course, this life can be wonderful. We've all experienced some tremendous joys and happiness, only to be reminded just how fleeting those moments can really be. And this is why it takes faith and trust in God to humbly accept what we are in this world and to confess by faith that God knows what is best for us. 1 Peter 1 from verse 23 says you have been born again not of perishable seed but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of god for all people are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field the grass withers and the flowers fall but the word of the lord endures forever and this these words should remind us of our eternal nature and that god is ultimately in control and this is our hope Somebody once said that we can either be satisfied with what we are or, or not, that is our choice, but it is only when we are in Christ and He is in us that we will ever be at peace with who we are. He is the one who makes all the difference, even and especially when we feel that we are struggling through life. And we can take courage in the reality that God is sovereign, He is almighty even though we simply cannot understand his ways at times. But when we are at peace with him through Jesus Christ, then we are able to rest in the knowledge that nothing happens without a purpose behind it. Because there are different times and seasons in our lives, and it takes faith to recognize them and to serve and glorify God in those seasons. Why were we not born a hundred years earlier or later than we were? It is because God is ultimately in control and he directs our paths. What this means is that your life is not an accident. God has known you since before you were conceived. 
And his ultimate purpose for you is to acknowledge him as the source and the meaning of your life. Now, the, the choice to follow him, of course, remains yours. But once you are in Christ, it becomes so much easier to make sense of life's good and bad times. Not that we will ever fully understand God, because we won't. But our lives lose the sense of meaninglessness, if there is such a word as that. Because when we trust and confess by faith that God is sovereign, he begins to change everything. And it takes great faith, but only a faith that God can give us. To echo Paul's words in Galatians chapter 2, when he says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Until we reach the point where we recognize and trust the superior wisdom of God, we haven't really begun to understand him at all. We certainly don't fear him. Now, this fear is not an abject terror of God, but rather a respect and an honor for him, which is due to him. When we try to live our lives without recognizing God and his glory and his power, we soon find ourselves, as King Solomon described, people without hope. People who are empty, dissatisfied, restless, and feeling that life is just miserable and meaningless. The secret of life is the presence of God himself. Most of life's challenges come when we try to deny the sovereignty of God, when we want to be in control. And Christians are not exempt from this, because we remain sinners, forgiven, yes, but each of us still struggles with our own fallen and sinful nature. And so God, by his spirit, gives us the faith that we need to remain in his grace. And we know he does this because of what Jesus did for us at Calvary. Listen again to the words of Ecclesiastes 3. And this time I'm going to go up to verse 17 from verse 9. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him. Whatever is has already been, and what will be has been before, and God will call the past to account. And I saw something else under the sun. In the place of judgment, wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. I thought in my heart, God will bring to judgment both the righteous and the wicked, for there will be a time for every activity, a time for every deed. It may not look like it now, but God will bring beauty out of all that happens for, to his people, to his elect. Remember that he has put eternity in your heart, and these things will pass. And if you are in Christ, he has prepared eternity for you. 1 John 5 from verse 10 reminds us, Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar, because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son, the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Your life doesn't have to feel like it's meaningless, just drifting along with no purpose or direction. It is only when you rest in Christ that you will be, ever be able to make sense of whatever is happening in your life today. It is only and all about Jesus and the saving grace that he has offered to you. Turn to him in faith and he will give you the strength and the grace to face today and all of your tomorrows. Be blessed and stay strong in him.